My wife loves chocolates, and I love daily magic games. I do a lot of really cool games. Villages of Valeria and all of the Valerian games are really fun. And so when I saw Chocolatiers, I decided I wanted to take a look at it. And so me, my wife, and Grant sat down and played and played and played. Because in Chocolatiers, you are basically a chocolatier. You're trying to secure chocolates and place them into sampler boxes. And you wanna place the right chocolates in the right boxes and then group those boxes together to formulate certain chocolate scoring areas. So if you want certain dark chocolates across a certain way, the more you get, the better. And there's different types of chocolates that will score you different types of points at the end of the game based on how many you have secured in a specific formation. There's six samplers that you need to make. Once that happens everybody gets one more turn and then you tally up all the points based on the chocolates you have in your tableau there's wild chocolates you can utilize and of course the bonus points you get for finishing the game having the low scoring boxes and of course for each different type of chocolate that you attach to themselves and that's the basic idea of the game it's pretty simple can you become the best chocolatier the uh, highest scoring point scoring uh, master chief in chocolate anyway let's go take a look down below i'll show you the game what it comes in and uh, how to play a basic round or two and then we'll come up and i'll discuss it so so here is the game Chocolatiers and everything that it comes with and as you can see there are these tile sets here which are your chocolate samples you're going to shuffle this stack of tiles up and put them into one big one here and then lay out five it doesn't matter the number of players in the game this is always going to be the same in addition these are the chocolates you're going to have in your hand as well as the ones you'll be getting in the game to formulate these samplers they're randomized and on each of them it will show you a shape a color and how many are in the deck you're also going to lay out six of these and it also doesn't matter the number of players in the game for each player that plays in this game which plays two to four players and takes about 25 minutes to play you're going to deal out three random chocolates from the top of the deck here and you're also going to deal out three of these random chocolate tokens here Additionally, you're going to have these point scoring markers for the end of the game, simulating points based from two all the way to six, whether you are the first person to complete all six of your chocolate samplers, whether you have the most three and four point scoring chocolate samplers in your tableau, or just the most cumulative grouped up types of chocolates, and you can score three, four, and five points based on the type of chocolate that you provide in your samplers. As for uh, the first player marker here, you're going to give it to the person who last ate chocolate, which is always going to be my wife whenever we play this game. And then you're going to begin the game. you got your three cards here and your three tokens, and you can take actions during the game. You can always take two actions, and the actions are as follows. One, you can draw any chocolate here and replace it from the stack. Two, you can discard any chocolate from your hand and then draw two chocolates from the stack and replace it. Another action you can do is discard the equivalent number and type of chocolates from your hand and then pick up the tile associated with that. So for instance, this tile here, in order to gather it and put it in your tableau, you'll need two heart-shaped chocolates and one of these cluster chocolates here. And if you do have that in your hand, you'll discard those cards, take this sampler and place it in front of you. And of course, when you get six of them, that is when the game is going to end. Addition you can go ahead and take this little guy here and place it down on any sampler in your tableau whether it be on top of a chocolate or whether it be in an empty space this will count as a wild chocolate and it will basically attach to any chocolates that are around it giving you a larger score which may help you gain these points at the end of the game the other thing you can do is you can choose to save one of these guys here one of these uh, different samplers here by taking your wild taking this placing it here and placing this on the scoring marker point you can only ever have one you're always going to set it aside which is basically going to allow you to place it into your tableau whenever you have the cards in your hand in order to uh, discard them and place it down into your tableau area those are the different actions that are associated with the game chocolatiers so let's go ahead and show you a quick round of how the game functions so this player he's got two green and a red as you can see on this board here there's two green and a red which means he needs this one here so he can spend one action to take this replacing one from the deck here and then he can take his other action to discard his hand, which is all the colors required, two green, a red, and this little swirl one here, place it into the discard pile, and then go ahead and take this and place it into his tableau. Additionally, when you take one of these out, you're gonna go ahead and take one and place it back in formation. So there's always going to be six and five here, regardless of the number of players in the game. Then it's the next player's turn because he took his two actions. And I have a purple, I've got one of these little clusters here, and I've got this here, which is these three here, which is nice. Uh, ooh, no, these are different separate sets. Uh, I have these two here, which is marks for these two, which means I need a blue. So I can go ahead and spend one action to take this, 
flip this one over, and then I can spend a blue, a purple, and then one of these guys here, discarding these for my last action. I'll take this and put it in my tableau, and then go ahead and replace. When you have no cards in hand, you're going to be limited on what you can do. You're gonna be able to draw cards from the stack here, and you'll be able to discard a card in order to gain two, but you could, if you wanted to, take one of these and place it on your board for an action, which would give you a cluster of three of these green chocolates. It doesn't matter as long as they're all attached in some formation. But in this case, he'll go ahead and take from this board here. So as you can see, he's probably gonna want maybe this, and he can take these two if he wanted for his two actions. Or let's see what else he can do here. He could take these two for these two, and he'll just need two blues. But most of them are gonna require red. So in this case, he'll probably just wanna take this one and this one, because they're also a lower count in the deck, or this one is a lower count in the deck. Most of the colored ones are lower counts, whereas these ones are higher counts. And then he's going to replace. That's one action, two action, place two new out there. And of course you can take them one at a time as well. So for instance, he could have just taken one, he could have discarded that one to take two which would still end up with the same number of chocolates in his hand. Back to this player's turn, he's got this cluster here, which is nice. He wants this heart here, so I'll take that for one action. He'll flip over another one. There's a blue one there. And what else does he want to do? He still needs another heart for this one, and he needs one of these for this one. So he'll take this one, and that will be his last action for the turn. And that's how the game works. You'll just keep going like that. When players discard chocolates in their hand equal to certain types, so for instance, if he had all three of these chocolates, he could discard this and place it. Placing rules is the only thing I really haven't explained. When you place one of these sampler sets down, you're going to have to connect it to one that's already on the board, and you have to connect it just like this. So for instance, if I had these two here, and I wanted to place another one down, I couldn't do this. I'd have to place it like this or like this. So you can never attach it to two separate tiles or samplers. You have to attach it to one singular one. And always remember, you want to try and attach them so that the uh, colors will match. And that's really important because at some point in the game, hopefully, you're going to be able to play wilds. And then, of course, you can connect multiple ones here. So, for instance, the game is going to end when there's six tiles here, but we'll just go ahead and show you three. And if it looked like this, the end of the game would trigger once somebody has six and everybody's going to take the same number of turns. In which case, the player who scored six tiles, and we'll just pretend like it's this guy, will get this here. The person who has the most threes and fours will get this. And he's got a three and he's got a four. He's got another four, so that's two, so he'd get this. And then you're going to look at all of the clustered colors, and you're going to determine who has the most of each cluster. So he's got four green, and he has got six of the red, which means he would get green and red. This player here, he's got two blue, so he'd get the blue here. They both have one purple, so you'd flip that over because no one would get it. Uh, this one here, there is two of them attached here and none of them attached here, so he would get this one here. And then this final one here, this cluster, this there's one and one, which just means there's one, and these are just one and one and one, so that would also flip over. At which point you'd add up all the points on your samplers, seven, six, and three, plus any bonus points here, three and five, and then for each wild you didn't use, you would gain another point, and they would do the same over here, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner of Chocolatiers. It's pretty simple simple, right? Let's come up and talk about it. So one little caveat, the game plays two to five, not two to four, and it plays the same way regardless of the number of players. But other than that, I think I covered it pretty good. All right, so let's talk about the game itself. Component quality, excellent, really, really nice. All the tiles are nice and thick, and they have the UV laser printing on top of it, so they all have that shiny gleam to them, which is nice as well. Each of the different tiles represent the scoring at the end of the game that you can get. While they're always all the same, there's different ways in which you can play the game to get certain scoring uh, values, and also depending on whether you're the first player or the last player or somewhere in the middle will determine kind of how you want to gather the points in this game. The first player is going to get the most choice, going to be able to gather the first, the first sample that they're going to want to get and also they're going to have the ability to choose basically what chocolates they want to gather from the stack there that are going to be harder to get than others but the last player has some benefits as well because gathering these certain samplers that have a spot missing in general it's not so good because if you have all of your spots filled you'll also score one point in addition it's a small point but it can, it can be worth placing a wild down or not uh, depending on if you can manage to pull it off because to actions and turns are very limited in this game and the last player is always going to be the most decisive about whether or not the game will end they kind of have that control if they want to have it and when that happens it can kind of mess over the players that are playing before him or her also in addition to that all the chocolates are very distinctual you're able to tell the difference between them and as you're connecting the different samplers together that's very important in my opinion they all have different colors and variations the only difference i guess is there's two of them which is the clustered one and the dark chocolate swirl one 
but even still those are very separate different types of chocolates however they are the most in the deck so you'll have to determine do you want these ones do you want to go for the more rare ones and what samplers are out and available for you to gather uh, additionally there might be certain chocolate uh, samplers that you'll never get a chance to get throughout a portion of the game but you're likely going to eventually be held the option opportunity to get the chocolates needed to get the sampler because you're going to run through the deck of the chocolates pretty regularly maybe at least two times uh, at least one time in a, a two-player game so you'll have the opportunity of gathering all the different types of samplers and it runs very quick the actions are concise and quick this is a puzzle game of sorts and it has a little bit of tableau management it has a little bit of chocolate hand management or resource management and it's very very simple the complexity comes in how you building your tableau which ones you want to save and what do the other players gather on their turns and you can kind of determine what they want from the samplers available and how you want to go about either gathering that sampler before them or completely avoiding it and getting what something else that might help you in some other way you also want to plan for uh, the future because when you do that you're going to be able to place these certain tiles down that correspond with the colors to try and match them up to score the most points points using that wild is gonna be very beneficial and based on the complexity of the sampler so for instance this one's a three pointer because it's easier to get and there's three different types of chocolate on it but this one's a seven pointer which seems like it's going to be better for you but the problem is none of these are connected in any way and in order to gather them uh is to score points based on the value of them you'll have to put wilds down which can be uh costly for your actions because one player is definitely going to have control of whether the game ends or not, and they're going to decide how it works and whether they can score the most points. Negatives to the game. The one I can say, obviously, is the game can be a little bit... Uh competitive in nature and you might not be able to do all the things you want to do one player is likely going to have all six of the samplers out where you may or may not get to have all six of the samplers out based on how you choose to play some players might just go for whatever is the most obvious solution while others might be going for the more tactical choices depending on what you're gathering they might try and take that from you to stop you from doing that so there is competition in the game but overall it's very light-hearted i really really enjoyed chocolatiers it has a great theme my wife loves eating chocolate and so it's one of those games I know is going to pop out quite often specifically because you'll probably get to go first in every situation but overall I had a really good time with this one if you're interested in playing a game that involves puzzly aspects hand management tableau management as well as of course the chocolate theme chocolatiers is something you should take a look at I had a lot of fun and I think you will as well